Knock knock. Who's there? Super Mega Cast. Super Mega Cast 2. Super Mega Cast episode 119. Yeah, we're back and better than ever with a new podcast that's geared towards children. Yeah, this one's just for kids, guys. So if you're over the age of 10, turn it off. All right, so well, let's get fucking down to brass tacks, kids. You can't swear if you're talking to the children. No, they need to learn. Yeah, they they should learn. You, you know our merch. Take your take your mommy's and pappy's credit cards, <laughs> and uh, just enter the the numbers on the front and the, and the three <laughs> digits on the back. I miss that guy. Uh, what was it? Voice over Pete. Yeah, he's still around, dude. He has his own YouTube channel now. I got five hundred thousand subs in one week. He has his own website now. Damn, Voice over Pete is killing it in the game. Guys, he is he's seriously word up to voice over Pete. He's done a lot for like the year. He's he gonna has. be in YouTube Rewind. No oh, doubt. Oh yeah, he'll be he, if I mean, he's he, not in YouTube Rewind, then fuck YouTube. Absolutely, man. Like he 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 has been one of the greatest memes of 2018. There's been so do you know that you know how slow time's going, Ryan? Johnny Johnny Yes Papa? That was only three months ago. No. Yeah. It came out before then, though. Oh, no, it's been, like, out for years. In fact, we knew about it, like, two years ago. But it only became popular then? Yeah, Ryan and I knew. We, we used to sing Johnny, Johnny, Yes, Papa, like, two years ago. Johnny, Just Johnny, Just like yes, we used Papa. to jam out to that, the, the, At night, I think of you. Way before it was a meme. And then it blew up. And then we were like, uh, don't want to be a hipster on this one, but we were listening to that way earlier. Was, was Simpsons... A meme before Frank did his whole Simpsons stuff, or did he kind of catch that wave as it was going? I think he caught it right when it was starting to crest. That's awesome. Yeah, mem- yeah. I miss Frank. I miss him too. Frank, if you're, I doubt you're listening to this, but we miss you. We miss you a lot, Frank. I, we saw him recently. We'll see him at the next show too, which, by the way, is coming up December 16th. Uh, tickets are almost sold out. Like 80, more than 80% of them are gone. So if you were planning on going, now would probably be the time to secure those tickets just to make sure you, uh, as I said, we only have a few more left. That means that, yeah, we're probably going to sell out Yeah, within the, within the week. It's at the Regent uh, in downtown LA. And also, uh, wrap a present and bring it for us to do a live mail opening because it's Christmas. And we'll stick it under the tree and then open it up uh, but, live on but stage. That's, that's 400 people. What if each person? Okay. That's like 100 presents. We can't even get through 10. Each, each Then we'll pick some out and open the rest up in a video. We got to bring a trash bag to put all of them in. Well, you're calling them trash now? No, I'm saying it's because it's easy to carry all of the presents out in a trash bag. Santa has his big sack. I don't have money to buy a big old Santa yeah, sack. Yeah, that shit's expensive. So we gotta use- Santa's sack is just a fucking decorative trash bag. <laughs> That's all it is, man. It's just a big old decorative trash bag. It's just a big old sack. It's just a drawstrings, just like trash bags have. Trash bags have drawstrings. Exactly. Yeah, dude. That's all I'm saying. Well, please come to the show. Ticket link will be in the description. Feliz um, Navidad, my friends. My, my friends, Feliz Navidad. And uh, guys, 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 guys. Uh, hope you've all been Fellas. well, fellas. Hope you've been doing well, and to the ladies, hope you've been doing well too. Ryan, how have you been? I've been all right. Just uh, let me guess, playing Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, still? I'm still playing. Like the Red fourth Dead podcast, Redemption it's like, how you been? Good playing Red Dead Redemption. That's pretty much all that my life is. I go home, I uh, smoke up what like cigarettes. Oh, thank God. I smoke up some cigarettes, and I play some Red Dead Redemption 2. I go home, I smoke six cigarettes. I texted Ryan on Thanksgiving, and I was like, hey man, what are you doing for Turkey Day? And your response was, smoking cigarettes and drinking milk. <laughs> yeah. And I responded, I was like, living like a king. <laughs> Is that really what you did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, in the morning, I got some, I poured myself a nice tall glass of milk. Went outside with Lego and uh, enjoyed some cigarettes and some milk. Uh, the breakfast of champions. <laughs> and then for my uh, Thanksgiving lunch, I uh, ordered myself some Popeyes <laughs> and watched King of the Hill and then continued Red Dead Redemption 2. That sounds fun. I did uh, bust on over <laughs> to uh, Aaron and Susie's place for a little bit because they were having a shindig. I popped in for like about like an hour and a half, two hours. Did you bring a Did you bring a, a gallon of milk and some cigarettes? No, I didn't. Well, I so, did bring cigarettes, but I didn't bring a gallon of milk. Did you bring enough to share with the class? No. Johnny, what is that? There better be enough for the class. That's my old man smokes. I lo- Every, everybody better get one. Dude, I love milk. I love milk and cheese. Milk and cheese are so good. I know I, you do. You're a big You're a big dairy proponent. God, dairy's so bad for you. It is though. That's the thing. Like, 
I've been feeling like shit lately, and I wonder, it's like, I wonder if I should cut out dairy. I'm going to start with sugar. I need to cut out sugar. But it's like, my mom went on some diet where she cut out sugar and dairy for a month, and she said like, two weeks in, it sucks at first, you feel awful. But she said like, two weeks in, she just felt like, amazing. Just like, energy all day, you just feel good. Like, we're, aren't humans not but supposed to- But now you would say she's not doing as well, and the cow is having a cow. What's that supposed to mean? What? You calling my mom fat? <laughs> no. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. I like guarantee if my Ca- mom listens to this, she's not going to be happy. Also, apologies for the background noise, the recording power hour in the room next door. And they don't care about Super Mega. So they'll just be as loud as they want. But the moment we raise our voice over two decibels, they'll bust in the room. Tucker's got to come in the room up. and tell us to shut up. I'm getting sick of it, Ryan. I'm going to burn this whole office down. Tucker will come in. <laughs> Do his little, his little Tuckerisms, <laughs> his little Tucker Prescottisms. <laughs> So, uh, sorry, but, um, hey, uh, so, uh, yeah, gotta film, uh, Power Hour, uh, so yeah. <laughs> it's such a perfect Tucker. Um, but imagine, like, Tucker has you at gunpoint, he has a gun <laughs> to your head, and he's, he's supposed to kill you. And he's he's like, like the Don. Yeah, he'll be like, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, didn't want to have to do this, but, uh, leave me no choice. So, uh, sorry. And that's the last thing you see before lights out. <laughs> Just like Tucker with that goofy f- fucking grin on his face where it's terrifying. Where his eyes just beating out of yeah, his Yeah, his eyes really pop. When he does that one grin, his teeth shine like a th- the light of a thousand Minecraft diamonds. And his eyes bulge out of his head. And uh, the, the veins throb upon his, his forehead. <laughs> and you just see him, and, and you see that at the other end of the gun. And then you see him start to pull his finger back on the trigger, and then night-night. You don't even out. hear anything. You don't. You don't. Your Lights out. Lights out. You can't even register what's going on. You think it's really just like lights out? You get shot in the head and just like flip a light switch? Some people survive. Yeah, that shit sucks. Well, no, it's great that they survive, but it's like, I'm sure that comes with its own set of, uh... Well, some people, like, stick a gun in their mouth and pull the trigger and then end up paralyzed. Yeah, that's, that is really not a, a pleasant reality to exist in. Yeah. Not fun. Probably not fun for the family members who have to walk in. I don't in think it's too. fun for anybody remotely involved in that situation. Yeah. That sucks. So uh, don't do that thing, guys. That's uh, it's this podcast message. But also, um, that sounded like I was about to like give like a rebuttal to that. I'm not. I was changing the topic. Okay. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Jackass. That's been like my thing this week. Okay. I bought the first season of the TV show. So you show. ditched you ditched Family Guy, it seems. No, I didn't ditch it. In fact, I watched two episodes of Family Guy this week. I watched the newest one, and it you was You were watching garbage. multiple episodes every day, Matt. You Ryan, were binging I have been busy day. with merch. I have been busy with Game Grumps. And I now, have been busy with Super Mega. And now you're busy with... Sometimes, Ryan, you know, let's say you have chicken for dinner every night, okay? Yeah, and you love chicken. Like, chicken's like your favorite meat. You know, you're going to really enjoy it. Chicken is not my favorite meat, Matthew. Okay, well, this is a hypothetical situation. Chicken's your favorite. You can always eat chicken. Chicken is not my favorite. Pork. No. Cheese and milk. Yes. All right? You have cheese and milk for dinner every single night. <laughs> and, and cigarettes. Cheese, milk, and cigarettes. Yes, that's your dinner. And <laughs> you you love it. You know, you can't get enough of this I stuff. dunk the cigarettes in the milk like they're cookies. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's disgusting. I fucking sop the juices out of them with my lips. I go, God. And I suck the milk out of that tobacco stick. And you wipe and you wash it down with a bite of then sharp I, cheddar. And I take a bite out of the cheddar and swish everything around in my mouth, kind of like you do with mashed potatoes and turkey and all. Like, what? Th- you don't swish it around your mouth? What are you talking about? Mashed potatoes and turkey? Mashed potatoes and turkey and stuff. You put all the foods inside of your mouth at once because it's great. Oh, I thought you meant like, like gargle it, like swish it around. When you said swish it around, I think like how you do with mouthwash. But I was thinking of like b- potatoes. You and don't turkey. gargle that gravy, son. <laughs> <laughs> um, gargling gravy sounds like a euphemism for um, having an ejaculant in you know, your mouth. You know what's disgusting? Wait, I didn't finish my Family Guy thing. <sighs> There's gonna be some nights where you're like, I still love this milk and cheese and cigarettes, but tonight maybe I'll have a Swisher Sweet. And some Cheez-Its, you know? Why would I ever have Cheez-Its over milk and cheese? Because maybe you're a little tired of it, but that doesn't mean you don't love it. And I can't all smoke saying. a Swisher Sweet. Yes, you can. I can't, That's literally I can't what inhale for. that smoke is what I'm That's, saying. Why not? Because it's, it's cigar smoke. Is a Swish, can you really classify a Swisher Sweet as a cigar? It's a cigarello. <laughs> you gotta puff it like a cigar. You can't 
smoke it like a cigarette? On Thanksgiving, I went to a gas station because I really wanted to get some nice cigars to smoke with me and the boys. Did you? Uh, well, it was late at night, and we went to a gas station. I was like, hey, do you guys have cigars? He's like, oh, yeah, over here. He's like, we have Black and Milds and Swisher Sweets. And I was like... <laughs> Well, I don't know if you can say those are cigars, but... You should have gone to a tobacco merchant. They were all closed. Well, of course, but you should have gone earlier in the day. I know I should out. have, Captain Hindsight. You know, they, they fucking... They planned this wonderful meal for you, and you can't even plan to get some fucking cigars they actually, during they the were, day? They were, they were like, okay, go get cigars. That was, like, my job. And, and I was like, oh, and you wait until... The, you're like, I will, I'll just get them at night. Well, the, even though they're preparing my Thanksgiving dinner for me and really working hard... Is that what I sound like? <laughs> that nasally, like, brat, like... Even though I hey, but I was busy all day working on merch stuff that day. Okay. So while y'all were stuffing your little pie holes, laughing it up with your family members, I was I was slaving behind a computer desk with sweat dripping from my brow for the pleasure of the viewers. I'm just kidding. I don't want to guilt you guys for anything. I did it because I wanted to, and I wanted to get you guys that good merch. Did you like Aaron's party? Yeah, Aaron's party was. I went before anyone was there. Because I didn't, I had to work on the stuff really bad, so I just stopped by um, a couple hours before everyone got there, because I knew I wouldn't have time later. So I, because it started at four or something. I was there from like two to four. I left right as Jory got there, and a bunch of people were getting there. Yeah, Jory was there, and I was there. I think Ross was there. Ross got there before I. They left. were playing Jackbox. They weren't doing that when I was there. They, they obviously, I'm not fun enough to play with. Guess not. That's disappointing. But uh, speaking of Jack, I have been watching Jackass, and I bought the first season of the TV show. Such a nice nostalgic show. I don't know why. It just takes me back to being like a teenage boy. It's just so much fun. But when you watch it, you don't get angry like you would a Paul brother. Yeah, I don't get angry at these guys. The things that slightly bother me, like when when, when Steve went on the Corolla show, that was the Adam Corolla thing. Well, let's talk about Steve O. Steve O has turned his life around to a crazy degree, and you got to give the guy crazy respect because he had the cra- Yeah, let's give Steve O a round of applause. Good job, Steve O. Come on the podcast if you Holy want. Holy shit, I would love to have Steve O. You were on Game Grumps. He why sat on this couch. Yeah, why not? Why not come on our podcast? I saw him in real life once and listened to his voice. Because you fucking blow. Thanks, Steve O. Come on, Steve, dude. Steve O, like, he went from rock bottom which was around the time when he went on Adam Carolla's show into that interview where he was just, I don't know what he was on, but he was on something. Um, and, and Adam and, said, is like, we gave him a few drinks behind stage. That's not smart for someone that's an addict. Like, I we d- thought it'd be I, fun to give I, him a few drinks. It's I like, doubt it was just a few drinks with the way he was acting. No, that was not alcohol. <laughs> that was... Whatever the fuck that, that, that was. That was like PCP. He had a PCP addiction. And cocaine and, and nitrous oxide. And... It's a gallon of PCP. <laughs> oh, that's sketchy. Yeah. yeah. That's classic. But it's crazy how Steve-O just, like, turned his life around, like... Found a homeless dog, kept it for his own. Like, Steve-O's awesome. He's in a relationship I now. love Is Steve-O, he married? Though. I don't know if he's married, but I know he's, he's in a pretty solid relationship from his Instagram. But, man, I would love to do something with Steve-O, whether it's, like, a... We do a cooking video with him, or we, uh... We just we go out and, and do something. We play a game with them. Or we have them on the podcast. We could play. We could play a uh, four square with them. <laughs> the game with the ball. Yeah. Where you make the four squares that you played in like PE in high school. Yes. I hated that game, dude. I nice sucked deduction. ass. Every single. <laughs> well, I didn't know if there was like a video game called Four Square. There's a there's a website called Four Square. I think right. What is Four Square for? You think of Squarespace? No, isn't there like a site called Four Square? There's a site called Four Skin. Like Da-dum. that one. <laughs> That's, see, that's me using my best joking abilities. But Steve-O, please come on. We would please, love to have you Steve-O, anytime. We're Matt in the LA area. and Ryan want to see you live and in the flesh. I've seen you before, Steve-O, at the Hollywood Improv. Um, you were shooting a promo for the Hollywood Improv oh, in the yeah. back room. Was that for the game group? We were there for game group? Yeah. And Nick Schwartzen was there or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick Schwarzenegger? <laughs> yeah. He's related to him? He's pretty drunk. <laughs> he was very drunk. He walked in the room and he like belched and then was like, whoops, and then walked out. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, Steve, like, that's crazy. And then, and then I, I've been trying to follow up on Bam recently, and Bam just seems like... The last thing I saw of him was that Vice... Was it Vice? Some some people did a documentary thing about him and his, like, trying to get out of uh, alcohol addiction. Yeah, it seems like he's a pretty he's bad He's falling back now. into it, unfortunately. Yeah, and I saw a TMZ interview with Steve-O where he was trying to say that, like, Bam needs to turn it around. I'm thinking, and like, wow, if the comments were like, if Steve-O is telling you to, like, turn it around, then you should probably turn it around. <laughs> it just, Bam was, I guess, just putting it, I don't, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like, it's all, like, situational. Yeah. 
Well, you don't fall into like alcoholism usually unless, you know, A, genetics, but B, your situation. Well, a lot of the guys had substance abuse problems like on the show, but I guess just due to unfortunate circumstances and like a mix of just that environment, it just kind of deep rooted itself into his life. Yeah. And like, well, it's like, of course, I'm not going to armchair it, but like Johnny, just going off of watching Jackass and well, they wouldn't seeing how they crazy wouldn't do it on were. set. And I, I, the guys would get really mad if Steve-O would show up like high. I don't think they would shoot. He would show like, up a lot like that. He 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 had stories where he like show up like in Jackass when he was like fucked up. Wild Boys. Sometimes he was fucked he up. He had like a terrible drug addiction. Yeah. And I remember he I think he was actually going to commit suicide. him, and that's when they took him to rehab. And there's those pictures of him right before they took him to rehab where he's like on the floor, like vomiting with like. 60 nitrous oxide containers jesus christ but he got help and he stuck to it that's awesome i know someone who was like a terrible terrible alcoholic and um but then they went to rehab and now they've been sober for three years and run uh an aa group every week and that's awesome Ooh, look at that yeah if you guys are struggling with substance abuse uh you can you can you can we believe in you you can grapple that you can you can tackle it and you can steve-o can do it if my friend can do it. You can you, Pokemon you can. go to therapy. Pokemon go to rehab. <laughs> what, if, what if Hillary Clinton came on TV and she's like, I have an announcement. I am Pokemon going to the 2020 election. <laughs> then she dabs. Oh, my God. Then, wait, does, hasn't she dabbed before? Yeah, she's dabbed. She was on Ellen and, and she was like, <laughs> yep. Oh, man. That was one of uh, her, oh, her campaign God. to reach out to the youth was not. Did not go well. Nothing will ever make me cringe as much as when a can like what a candidate did when like I don't know if this was during the candidacy or whatever, but when he did the hotline bling thing. Oh, Donald Trump. It was so awkward. Mr. Got me on the cell phone. <laughs> Tell me what that hotline bling. Oh yeah, that was I, I I I hate when like a show, especially like Saturday Night Live, puts like a celebrity into a bit. And the only reason it's funny is just because it's the celebrity, but they're so bad at acting, and it just doesn't fit, and it's like, this sucks. But, but the audience is like, oh, 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 just because well, it's the celebrity. Like, I was re-watching, like, uh, I can't remember what I was watching. I was just watching something, and I was paying attention to this, of how I'm like, the only reason some of this is funny is because you wouldn't expect, I mean, he wasn't in it, but, like, if you make a popular actor like Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt did some goofy thing in Deadpool 2, for example, where it's like, it's it's... It's mainly funny because it was Brad Pitt, or it was mainly funny because it's this famous actor doing the. Isn't that like the thing. only re? That's that's the crux of the joke, though. Because if it was just a random person, that joke wouldn't have been funny. But it's like, oh, it's Brad Pitt doing it. It might have been funny, but like, it felt very centered around like it's funny specifically because like it was like, hey, it's Brad Pitt. It was like, yeah. hey, it's this person, and it's like, um, Saturday Night Live for me. It, it, there's if there's if you look up the definition of hit or miss in the dictionary, it should just be the Saturday Night Live logo. Because they, ne like, they'll they have miss good most sketches, of the time, but though. most of them miss. And I mean, I kind of get it. If you got to do a show an <laughs> hour long week. every week, you're not going to be able to it's write enough be... funny content. Yeah. But still, some of, that, some of it's just so painfully unfunny. I mean, it's always been like that. Yeah, I mean, like, even if you go back and watch some of the episodes from like the 80s, it's like that. But I feel like back then it felt like the cast were a bunch of friends... Like the vibe on the show like felt Chevy like Chase that. And Chris like even and back stuff. in like Will Ferrell days, and like yeah, I you can go back to SNL. Chevy Chase and stuff like that. But like, I don't know. When I watch old SNL, it really does feel like an old club of like friends having fun. And then oh, like yeah. I watch it today, and it it doesn't feel it does. I, it just does like the cast doesn't feel close. Like, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Who, like, Maybe it's the chemistry. Are. Like I, I I it could just be I like the chemistry of the people that were on it before and like there's and so maybe, many classics. and you know them better because they're all they all became so famous you well, know one of the people on snl that i really liked that was on when i didn't like most of the people i was on it was jason sudeikis i really liked his delivery and shit yeah he came from snl I yeah believe. so many actors i don't realize like came from <laughs> snl um like pete davidson apparently pete davidson is a massive dick have you heard that is he so apparently, like some some guy that was on SNL, like pissed next to him in a urinal, and was just like he had the biggest dick. So, oh, he has the biggest. No, no, dick. he's not the like he has the biggest penis. Oh, okay. Because someone pissed next to him and said that he was just like massive. They were popping a glance at uh at Pete Davidson's uh, Peter. And look at Pete today. He's got his bleach blonde hair. No longer with uh, Ariana. She said thank you next to him. Thank you next. I want to know the real reason why they broke up. 
Probably because it was rushed. Yeah, that's probably it. I it's mean, all these conspiracies, but it's like I guarantee it's just because they, what well, they got married, they got engaged like two weeks into knowing each other. Yeah, or like, maybe like a few weeks or a month or so. Or that whole thing was a publicity stunt. I don't know. Weird publicity stunt, just there, something I wouldn't picture Pete Davidson doing. There's this thing going around, and, and it people, doesn't seem like both like. You would never, like, think, someone beforehand wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, Pete Davidson, I really grow Well, don't, don't you have to be kind of unstable to get engaged two weeks into knowing somebody? Well, they're, both of them, I mean, I'm not, not I don't, I don't want to judge them because I also, compared to other people, live in my own little bubble. Oh, but, totally, But, totally. like, I think they're in a separate bubble that's, like, above ours to where it's, like, they... They don't exist in the same everyday life that we do. Just rich, like, I have to believe this. Like, a lot of rich people don't have a grasp on normal day shit. Just because I have a lot of friends that work for, like, big rich people, like, as a secretary or whatever. And just hearing what, like, these people are doing. Not just be, not because they have the money to do it, but because it's like, I never learned to do this. And I'm not going to ever learn. And I'm just going to pay for it to be done. I yeah. Mean, that's one way of getting stuff done. But I feel like it leaves you so disconnected from shit. Where, yeah. like, if you're b being driven around and if you have, like, a personal chauffeur when you're supposed to be learning how to drive yourself oh, and definitely. shit like that. And also I feel like... I Maybe like, that's just the old Southern coming out. I don't know. I feel like a lot of rich people don't have a grasp on what reality is because they live such a different lifestyle from what reality is for 90. It's not a negative. It's not like a super negative thing. It's just like I you can't you can't fake an experience. Like you, you have like, to live it. Do you see when Bill Gates was on Ellen and they asked him to guess the price of <laughs> yeah. anything? And, and he was like, how much is uh, laundry detergent a hundred dollars and it's like dude are you that out of touch and and I'm not talking about like with these people I'm not talking like lives in like a big house in South Carolina rich I'm talking like billion dollar built like billionaires or millionaires like rich. multi million yeah. yeah like I'm not talking about like rich people that it's just like oh we had a neighborhood that's called Ascot near where I lived where a lot of like the quote unquote rich, rich people lived we we had but one I'm talking like Billionaires and millionaires, buddy. There was one called Swan Lake, I think, in Charleston that was gated and had its own airport. So Jesus. Yeah. I knew a girl that lived there, and I'm pretty sure her dad was in the mob. I'm not joking. Um, I tell you the last... I'm not going to say it on the thing, but you hear the last name, you're like, oh, yeah, that's mob. Just say it. I'll bleep it out. Okay. And the dad and my mom knew him, and they had, like, the biggest mansion um, they had like a hibachi room and, and like he was dirty. Like he definitely like, he was the most like mob dude you'd ever seen. It's like, he has that much money, probably in the mob. Yeah. But like, anyway, um, I think rich people like that, it's like, it gets skewed because they just detach from what life is for 99.999% of everyone else on earth. You yeah. Know? And it's like. I mean, that's why they're called the 1% because they're in the 1% of people that have that much money. So I think they just live a different lifestyle where they, they don't go shopping at the grocery well, store. Well, they, they get people to do it so they don't... Not even to that extent. They don't even print things out themselves. They don't put the contacts in their phones themselves. Like, like grocery stores, yeah, but like little things that we think of as just like, oh, let me add you in my phone. No, they email their secretary and they're like, hey... Can you uh add, can you put this person's number in my phone? And like I'm not making this shit up. I have a friend who legitimately does this. Isn't that someone. more work than putting it in your phone though? Because you got to put the number in the email on your phone and then send it. Like, they will they will get an email that says, "Can you put this number in my phone?" And either they bring the phone or they will have to go get the phone from this person. That's more work for them. Than <laughs> I putting know. The number in I the know. Phone. It doesn't on, make on, any fucking on iPhones, sense. You click and hold a number and it says "Add to contacts." Put the name. Boom. It's like, I, I guess that you really just lose value of money because if you have millions and millions and billions I mean, of dollars. Why wouldn't you? If you don't notice the, like, notice it, like, because if you buy I, I don't think it's something that a lot of people can help. No. Because if you're able to afford a certain, like, for example, if you aren't able to afford movers, then you, like, know how hard moving is. But if you have been able to afford movers your whole life, you never know that moving, when someone's like, hey, can you help me move? You don't have that, like, Oh, that's yeah. awful. Or like if you if just you, that type of shit. It's like I feel like it's minute shit that adds up. Or if you grew up like like we did, where you know like for grocery shopping, like your parents would you'd have to like coupon and like oh yeah, and you couldn't get like the cereal you necessarily wanted because it's kind of expensive. It's like you carry that with you for the rest of your life because you you kind of get the value of like oh yeah, and then also like but those people don't have that always, and it's like 
when when they have to send someone out to get all these groceries, like seven hundred dollars of groceries, it's like they don't even check their bank account because they don't. So it's like they don't understand the value of these things because it's they just like go get this. I have money for it. it. It's not any money for me. Just go get it. They don't take their pets to the vet. It's just a lot of stuff that if you can pay for it to be done, most people would do it. But since it's being done, you don't you don't gel with a certain part of society in that way because you have no connection well, to you're like... not really part of society at that point in a way. You are. I mean, you... You're like a different part of society because you're not like part of everyday it's, society. It's kind of like entertainers. Like they have... You know how entertainers have their entertainment bubble and that's why you see a lot of people dating within the entertainment industry and that's why you'll probably see like... I mean, I don't know. I feel like rich people have their own social bubble. Yeah, it, of like, course. Celebrities I mean, you, are rich, but have celebrities their have bubble. their own social bubble. YouTube's Musicians, have their own social bubble. Yeah. It's, like, it's just how it works, but it's like, because you relate on something. And then rich people relate on money and that lifestyle. So that's why rich billionaires are friends with other rich billionaires. Yeah. You know, it's like, honestly, getting someone to do everything else for you, that sounds almost like boring. Because it's like, what, what you, would you do with your day? And also, like, don't, don't Play you Play Red Dead Redemption don't you 2, get, I tell you. Yeah. That. <laughs> But don't you get, like, fulfillment out of taking your dog to the vet? Like, it's shitty, but then when you're done, you're like, oh, I'm done. I did that. Yeah. And, or like, like buying grocery food, shopping. You go out, out, you get what you want from the grocery store, and then it's, you stock up your fridge, and you're like, I actually oh, I really that. like grocery shopping. I love grocery shopping. I love, I love coming home and then, like, having to organize everything. Like, I'm like, oh, I got to throw this food out now and replace it. Like, I, actually, I think I like the act of cleaning out my pantry it's and so my, nice. r- like, fridge I love and freezer. I love cleaning my place. And I love, like, kind of couponing where it's, like, <laughs> oh, milk is on sale this week. I can get milk for cheaper then. It's like I like doing that because well, it's like I can save some money and then I like also, seeing those negative like minus two, minus one, oh my minus God, 50 Vons, cents, all that shit add up. If you got a Vons card. Va- Vons, Ralph's, Food Line, Publix, whatever f- uh, grocery store. I know I, at Food Line it's called the MVP card. Mo- I remember my mom had one on her keychain. I've never seen a store personally give me so much savings as Vons in California. Yeah. I'm like every time I go up I'm like, damn, $17. Okay, okay. I can, I can get down with that. Aaron's eating a pizza right Aaron Hansen, what are you doing? What are you doing, son? Aaron, get in here. Eating a pizza. Aaron, chewing. get in here. We're bringing in special guest Ego Raptor. What's what the up? hell are you talking about? What kind of pizza did you just eat? Cheese. No pepperoni? No pepperoni. Just cheese? Uh-huh. Did you have some buffalo wings? No. What the what fuck? Is buffalo oh, wing? Jesus Christ, Aaron! <laughs> All right, special guest uh, Ego Raptor Jones. That was him. That's Can we get a soft cool. golf golf clap? Soft golf clap. Golf claps are so stupid. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I wish the audience could have seen your face. That's how I'm excited to do live shows. <laughs> yeah, it's just this, but on stage. Because I, I guess there's a it. lot of stuff you. Here's the thing: there's a lot of stuff you can't read because of our facial expressions. But also, I feel like, in general, even if we did have facial expressions, sometimes. There's got to be people at live shows that take us seriously sometimes, just like there are. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the next show we're doing, already over 300 tickets are sold. So the statistics of that, there's going to be someone in there that's going to take it fully seriously. We make well, a there's almost 400 tickets sold is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're crossing that mark. Damn, guys, I'm all, I'm, I'm, we're genuinely Again, tickets blown are, away. Again, tickets are going, and uh, Shows this is bigger less... than any show that we've done. And, it's a uh, holiday show. There's going to be... Podcast segment, podcast segment with a guest. There's going to be maybe a musical thing. There's going to be a musical guest. There's going to be a live debate. There's going to be a big debate on. We're going to debate rice versus puke on Once stage. Once and for all, we're going to debate because it. we have we have been. That is still a point of of contention in our friendship. And uh, you know, a few surprises along the way, I'm sure. But it's going to be one giant, fantastic holiday spectacular. And if you don't show up. You're not cool. Or you're not 18 You yet. You must be enlisted in the army if you don't show up. Well, you got to be 18. Well, if you're over 18 and don't show up, you have to be drafted. That's just the rules. And we didn't make up the rules, so you got to go buy the tickets, guys, please. Or else you'll get drafted. We, don't want, we, don't, we do not want you to be drafted. Also, can we talk about how fucked up and stupid it is that when you turn 18 in America, you literally have to sign that if they draft, you'll say yes? Like, you I have for, to. I think I forgot. What? Like, I, no, I, like, I forgot signing it. Like, I know I probably did, of course, but... It's fucked up, though. It's like, oh, uh, well, sign your life away, like, just in case we go to a big war. It's like, well, we were born in this country, so it's our fault. Yeah. <laughs> At least we don't have to do mandatory military service. A lot of countries, though, I have a friend who lives in Switzerland. He has to do 12 months of mandatory military military service. You know what they pay you? 3000 a month, tax-free. If it works as, like, a job that, like, as Food Line was a job for me, then yeah. But if I have to put my life on hold for it, then I'm not down. 
Yeah, I get that. But also, like, what what the Switch do, that doesn't sound that bad. Because it's not, like, crazy fucking military shit. It's just you gotta do, like, military uh, training. But you If three... there was a bill to be passed that said yes or no for mandatory oh, military service. Oh, I mean, I would service. say no, because that sounds shitty. Yes, I just want to make... we're not used to it. just want to make sure that... But he well, gets he gets well, a free well, well, apartment. Well, well, we're not used to it. Is What are you talking about? No, I mean, America's not used to that. Would that... you Would you want to adopt it at some point in the future? Well, it depends on what it would require, I oh, guess. Oh, you dirty man. Dude, if people get paid well, and it's not intensive, and like... I, mandatory, I don't know. It's the mandatory part that's getting me. Yeah, I I, no. I don't know because it's mandatory for us if we get into war to go fucking be slaughtered by. See, we don't have mandatory <laughs> military shit. We just have the case where it's like, oh, you don't have to do this. But if we go to war, then you're gonna go get I killed. I can tell you right now, mandatory. I wouldn't be a good soldier if I was. If I were drafted, I would be a crying little baby. You think I would? And if I'd I'm be, out there in the fucking I'd be, shit, I'd be shredded like cheese. Because that's that's the thing with like drafts. Like if you watch World War II movies. They know you're, they're sending people out just to die, and they know that. They're like, we just need to send people out to fight. Okay, sir, where are we? On We're the f- front lines. Uh, if you're putting the front lines, that's almost a guarantee you're going to die. Well, you're just the wall. That, the front line is essentially, at least like World War II, the front line, if you were advancing, not if you were defending usually, but if you were advancing, it's just, uh, you're just the wall to make sure the rest of the soldiers can get on, to get on the territory or get, yeah. get through the passage. I watched and a really good like, movie yep. um, called Thin Red Line, and it had a lot of that in it. And it's just like, I look at that war shit, and I'm like, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like, I couldn't fight in war like that. I couldn't kill people. I couldn't. That's like, why a lot of people come back fucked up, and we don't take care of them. Woo! Woo! Yeah. All right. But, like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, imagine if we were in the same platoon. We still wouldn't have fun. Dude, I, I would literally cry and shit my pants on the battlefield. I would cry every like, day. Reali- Going into battle, I'd be shaking and probably crying. <laughs> Realistically, like, I don't want to go to war. And I See, get- it's, it's, it's men like this who make America sound weak. What do you think North Koreans are doing listening to Super Megacast, hearing how <laughs> two ordinary male U.S. citizens talk about their own military? It's like... What you you drop drop me into the Siberian wilderness <laughs> with an AK-47 with a bunch of highly trained Russian military people shooting at me? Do you think I'm gonna win? <laughs> no. In fucking negative twenty degree weather, dude. The like, Russians can fucking hold their ground. There was a report. They proved that in World War II. In Stalingrad. Yeah. The deadliest battle in what history? Like one point two million people died. All I gotta say is good fucking work on that one. Also, they 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 were not supposed to. They slaughtered the Nazis, dude. They fucking. They just, weren't supposed to. They, they just. Pfft. Like if there was a weatherman, he'd have been like, ooh. Hitler's taken over. That's why Napoleon lost, too, when he tried to go into Russia. Because, like, no one is, is fitted for Russia like Russians, because they live there. And no yeah. one is, like, um, you can't, like, go, imagine going into a country, to an area where it's, like, negative 40 degrees. It's like, how are you going to survive months and fight in that? Especially when you're in, like, tents and limited supplies, and you got to share everything with everyone? Like, mm-mm. Like your sleeping bag? Like a Russian winter. I want to experience it. Like, I'd love to go to Russia in the no, winter. Want, no, no. Just to see it no. on a vacation. Well, I, I don't know if that's even a vacation. That's just like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to go be miserable. <laughs> yeah. I really do want to go to Russia, but I actually don't think Americans can go to Russia right now without a special visa. I'm pretty sure it's like, like, you know how we can just fly to Japan? Yeah. I don't think we can go to Russia the same way. I'm pretty sure you have to apply for some kind of tourist visa. And uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's a good time to go to Russia. I'd like to go to like Moscow or St. Petersburg, though. Like, Russia does seem like a pretty cool place. I'd love to go around to a bunch of old, like, Soviet Union cities that are kind of, like, dila- dilapidated. Um, you go to, like, Kazakhstan or, like, uh, fucking, what's the country I'm thinking of that's in War Dogs? Al- 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 Albania. Algernon. Algernon. That's a book. <laughs> it is. Flowers for Flowers Algernon. Flowers for Algernon. Uh, have you read it? Yep. Really? Yeah. How many classics have you read? How many classics? I mean, you kind of are forced to read a lot of them in school. What's the one about the the missionary family that goes to Africa, but then it, they realize that they can't actually help, and it's very oh, depressing. Oh, um, I started reading that just for fun, and I didn't get very far. I know what you're talking about, though. The, um, <sighs> my mom read it and tried to get me to read it, and I started. I know what you're talking about, though. One of my favorite books, because I didn't like much of the stuff that we read. One of my favorites was The Crucible. I liked The Crucible. Didn't read that. What's, okay. what's The Crucible about? The, wait, you don't know? Mm-mm. 
The Crucible is like about the witch trials and stuff, and it's like just kind of a bunch of he said, she said, and like kind of paranoia around the town. Can you believe in America we just burned women that we thought were witches? Now we didn't burn that many, and I, we didn't kill that many women that we thought were witches. We killed a few, and I just want to... Because I always see those comments that are like, hold on now, we didn't burn that many. Wasn't it like a crazy high amount? No, but besides the burning, they'd be like... Well, Did we even burn people? Oh yeah, at the stakes? Wait, uh, Salem witch trials... No, just look up, did we burn quote-unquote witches? That's not a fun way to die. Because I know a lot of the things we would do is we would test to see if they were witches and people would die by that. People would... Yeah. Like, didn't... <laughs> when they, like... Tie shit to their ankles and throw them in the body of water, and if they, they float it up, it's like, oh, they're not a witch. Because because <laughs> we, I, I think it was no if they, <laughs> witches float. Yeah, witches float. So if they floated, so or was it that witches sink? Whatever it was, they drowned women. They tie them to a log and be like, well, if they're not a witch, then they'll float. And it's like, well, if you tie a fucking tree to someone and throw them into a river, they're not gonna survive. It's like pointing a flintlock pistol at a woman's head and going. She's a witch, she'll survive, so I'm pretty sure she's she's a witch, so <laughs> like oh, just she was a witch. Uh more than two <laughs> two hundred okay, Salem in the Salem witch trials in one year, uh twenty were executed. But I think Europe was the big one where they killed the most witches. Like and I, they would they would accuse them of being witches for like doing math and shit. It's like so stupid. Well, like, I mean whiff. you can't have women reading now. Mm-mm. -mm. She's a witch. She learned that through the satanic arts. God, man. Chris, was the whole witch thing born out of Western, like, religion? Yeah, it's Christi it's a, it was it's a, Christianity. It's a Christianity thing. Are there witches in the Bible? It, w when it said witch, it meant someone who, pra like, a woman who practices... Witchcraft? Uh, satanic stuff. Witchcraft. Yeah, witchcraft. That's why people don't like Harry Because when you think of witch, you think of, like, the pointy black hat and the broomstick. But yeah. Can't do that. The witch trials were crazy. That, like that's that's just a crazy period of history. You're you just know? hanging a bunch of people, burning them, throwing them in rivers. It's like oh, but like Ryan, I'm sorry. That why'd your phone, phone go off? I don't know. Let me see. Before we came in here, I, I said silence that. Brent sent me a big old nude. Oh, Brent, his nudes are fantastic, man. He has he has a delightful cock. Um, you know what book I liked in high school that has to do with Africa it was Things Fall Apart. Did you have to read that? I remember it was a summer reading book. Yeah. What was the um, book you're talking about? Yeah. Yep. No, 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 no. This is a book about... What, what was the book you're talking about? What is it called? Things Fall Apart. Things... What is it about? It's about this tribe in Africa right as, uh, like, the Europeans start coming in, like, missionaries, and they, they don't know how to react to it, and it's kind of about the village and, like, their life falling apart. It's really good. Because I remember, like, they know, like uh, they killed one of the guys, and he had, like, a motorcycle, and they thought it was, like, an iron horse, so they chained it to a tree, and, like... <laughs> But I mean, like, if you had lived your whole life in, like, a tribe and never seen that, like, all you'd seen is horses, you'd think that's, like, some beast. You're like, what the hell is that thing? He gets on it, and it, like... Sorry, my brain was just scrambled. I know the audience couldn't hear it. But it Power too... Hour is going really well over there. Yeah, I can I can hear I can hear a lot of screaming. They got the AC going. It's freezing cold in here, and, uh, sure you guys are enjoying the sound of it, but, uh... They say they don't mind, Matt. Even though the one time when we did keep it on, they're the, like, why does it sound so all, bad? All they did was complain. It's like, I'm sorry, guy. We don't have control over the AC in this one, so. Oops, sorry. Sorry, fellas. But, uh. And lady fellas. Did you read The Odyssey? Of course. No, yeah, well, I, not the whole book, because that thing's, like, fucking massive, but. Man, the, like, I remember we, we had I to I mean, read, the story is, like, what, Star Wars? Oh brother, where art thou? Is oh brother, where art thou? Is like directly. It. It's 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 supposed to be verbatim, but like I love that movie. Wait, Odyssey, you yeah. haven't seen it? No. Oh, well, let's watch it soon. Okay. I mean, there's so many movies I gotta show you. If you there's watch a lot the of... Ballad of Buster Scruggs, is it good? I liked it. I think you, I think you'd enjoy it. If you just sit down with a bunch of friends and have a drink, and then if you get bored in one of the things, it's Netflix. Just turn it off. Just at least watch the. I think the first two are really really. Fun. Have you you've been watching more but westerns? But I also like the what? Haven't you been watching more westerns? Uh, every now and then. Yeah. I want to watch the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the Tucker Brothers are going to be doing a Western month or something because it's War Movie Month. But I think during Western month we should watch Bone Tomahawk. Oh yeah, well we should just because it's from the same guy who directed uh, what's that movie with Vince Vaughn? Brawlin' Brawlin' Cell Block, Block 99 yeah. or something. It's the same director as that. 
I only saw the last half of that movie, and it was really good. Which which movie? Cell Block 99. Oh, yeah, you saw the violent parts. It was so violent. And Vince Vaughn, like, he, he's, he's pretty good in serious roles. I've been watching the first season of True Detective lately. I've already seen it, but I wanted to watch it again. I've never seen True Detective. It's, it's incredible. It's Matthew McConaughey and uh, Woody Harrelson. The third season looks interesting. The trailer, at least. The second season was where they had Vince Vaughn as the main character. Yeah, but they also and had... People didn't um, like it. Uh, Colin Farrell? I think so, yeah. I didn't watch the And I like season. Colin Farrell. I do like when comedy actors, you know, step out and do, like, a new, like, a serious role. I mean, it worked for Brian Cranston. Vince Vaughn played the drill, drill, instruct, drill instructor in uh, Hacksaw Ridge. I want to see that one. Well, the thing about Thin Red Line was it was, uh, what's his name? Um, something, t- uh, Terrence Malick. What's his name? The director? I, 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 I don't know. I don't, you were telling me about it, how like all the big name actors were like, we got to be in this comeback movie. Yeah, it was like his comeback movie. So it's just a bunch of actors, and like ca- the whole movie is just cameos, essentially. It would just like the camera would pan over, and it would be like, oh, there's John C. Riley in the platoon. He says two lines. <laughs> Who else was in it? Like George jo- Clooney. George Clooney, John Woody Cusack, Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. Um, there's so many big people in Joan it. Joan Cusack? Or John? John. Okay, not um, his sister. I just feel like, it would just, like... Two hours in it's a long, it's a three-hour movie, but, like, two hours in the movie, it would just, like, they'd all be, like, talking during a victory scene, it would just, like, cut to, like, a celebrity smiling, and then <laughs> never show them again. They wouldn't have any lines, and it's like, wow. I feel like, uh, um, um, uh, Travolta was, like, in it for, like, five minutes as, like, a sergeant. Really? Yeah, it's, it's a good movie. I liked it a lot. I can't remember if it's Terrence Malick, but there is a director yeah, that's, that's who director. is infamous for cutting scenes with actors in them, and, like, those actors being like, I... That's him. I memorized those lines, and um, he just cut me out of the movie. And, like, the actors wouldn't know until they saw the movie. John, John Cusack thought, I think it was John Cusack. It might have been another actor. Um, he thought he was the main character the whole time they were shooting, but then the way he cut the movie just kind of made him not the main character anymore. I feel like that was Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody, yeah, 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 it was him. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he, he would, like, massively recut his movies and just change it completely and stuff. Just, like, how does... How does that work? If your story's solid and shit, then how can you cut out a whole character and still... I don't know. I guess if Maybe you I have... need to watch more Terrence Malick. That's probably what I need to do. I'm a big movie buff, oh, but you haven't seen Terrence Malick? Well, By the way, guys, movie reviews. I know break. we released one. Uh, and it's it, We just have been waiting for Tucker to get back in town. He's back in town now so we can shoot more. We're, we're going to do tr- a Christmas one. We're going to try to get them out before Christmas. Um, we've just been slammed with the holidays and with merch. But we really want to start putting more focus and love into Super Mega because... You guys deserve it. You guys show us so much love, and we want to be putting more time and Slammed. effort in. So we're gonna try to gonna try like to do Anne's it. headboard. Slammed like Anne's headboard. Yeah. What's that supposed to mean? Yeah. You're having sex with my mom, and the headboard because you're so violently having sex with my mom. The headboard is doom, doom, doom against the wall with the <laughs> thrusting of your pelvis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what that means. Sounds like construction next door. You ever heard like neighbors having sex or something really loud? I've heard, believe it or not, I think I've heard sex up above the world so high like a diamond in the office above. Oh, we were there. Yeah, we heard that later one night. It's like, ah! She was ah, like, oh That was loud God. as hell. I was just like, wow. We were, we were here at like 1 a.m. working on something, and just like someone in like an office above us was just getting railed. <laughs> it was loud, dude. That was some loud, that was the loudest sex I've ever heard. It really? Was, yeah, I've never heard sex that loud. She was, like, screaming in pleasure. Not of, like, pain, but it was... And then every time we tried to get someone to come in and listen to it, it would stop. And then they would leave, and then five minutes, they're like, ah, ah, ah! <laughs> Jesus. Maybe it was someone getting murdered, and we're just like, ah, they're just having Oh, yeah, sex. dude, they're having sex. Listen. <laughs> Help! <laughs> oh, my God. But, uh... Dude, Ryan, I think if... Bringing it back, I think if we went into a uh, war together, we would have a great-ass time. Yeah. Yeah, dude. What about these rushed ad reads that we forgot to break for? Like Harry's. Matt, if you're like me, you're a man. And that means that it's, 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 it's really difficult to buy a gift for, for, for a man. It is, man. I don't know what to get man. But we know what to get man. Man have hair on face. Man love Big Blade. And that's why man like Harry's. Harry's makes long-lasting, quality products at a super reasonable price man will love. Harry's has a 4.5 out of 5 star rating on Trustpilot. There's German engineer blades for as low as $2 each. 
and man like save money. It practical gift he actually use. It'll also save him money on blade refills. You can personalize it to make it feel special. Choose a color that's right for man. Now with limited edition holiday handles, you can even get man personal engraving option. Man will love the handsome gift boxes that come with the set. These gift sets start man at just $10. And man even get 100% quality guarantee. If man doesn't love, Return is quick and hassle-free for men. And as a special offer to our fans of the show, we've partnered with Harry's to give you a $5 off any shave set, including our limited edition holiday sets, when you go to harrys.com slash supermega. Plus, you'll get free shipping. This offer is for new and returning customers and is only available for the holidays. Each Harry's shaving set comes with ergonomic weighted handle with an option to engrave. German-engineered five-blade cartridges that provide a close, comfortable shave. Foaming shave gel for a rich lather. A travel cover to protect your blades. And it all comes in a handsome holiday gift box. Or just want something for yourself? Redeem a Harry's trial offer to experience the quality of shave before committing. Get your holiday shopping done for man early. Free shipping ends on December 12th, so act now. Go to harrys.com slash supermega to get $5 off a shave set while supplies last. What is it, Matt? harrys.com slash supermega. Man will love. Blade. Man, uh... Ryan, you've been looking good ever since you started shaving with Harry's. Thank you. Shaved your eyebrows off. You, Interesting choice, but... And you've been looking good ever since you've been using Stamps.com. Stamps.com? These days, you can practically get everything on demand. Like our podcast. Did you know you can even get postage on demand? All you need is Stamps.com. <gasps> With Stamps.com, you can access all the services of the post office right from your desk. Buy and print real U.S. postage for any letter in any package, all available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Just click, print, mail, and you're done. Doesn't get much easier than that, does it, Ryan? Nope. Stamps.com will even send you a digital scale. You can weigh your letters and packages and print the exact amount of postage every time. Ryan, I had to send my mother some samples of my hair. I needed something to mail it with. Go into the post office and get in the postage. That's too much work. Way too much. Got to wait in line. Work. You got to drive. Got to waste gas. I use stamps.com. I got all the postage I needed. I got that digital scale even, so I knew exactly how much my hair samples weighed. Say what? Yep. Right now, use the code SuperMega for this special offer: a four-week trial, which includes postage and a digital scale. Whoa! So just make sure to go to stamps.com. And before you do anything else, click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in SuperMega at stamps.com, and then you then you enter SuperMega to get that to get that sweet little deal. That's a pretty sweet deal, Ryan. Especially with the holidays coming up, you can ship some stuff, ship your relatives those uh, that fruit cake. Fuck yes. All right, guys, we're done with the ad reads for this one. Um, yep. Thank you to the sponsors. It helps support the podcast when you check them out. Uh, so, so please, uh, go do that. Also, something I want to, I would love, uh, in the future, it'd be so cool if we got, like, a studio for Super Mega, because it'd be really cool at some point to make the podcast live action, like a multi-camp thing, something we've talked about forever. Yeah, we just have to. We need to... our own studio, but maybe, maybe in 2019 we'll be able to, with the support from merch and stuff, we'll be able to maybe one day get our own office space. Like rent, rent an apartment secretively just to use as an apartment. That's, an, that's an apartment probably space. cheaper than getting an office space. Especially in LA. I don't know. I was looking at office space prices. Some of them aren't too bad. Ooh. We can get our own fucking recording set. We can get a little, a cool little hangout area. Record some shit. I would in love there. to have a cool little hangout area. How cool would it be to have our own like super mega office? Well, you know, we'd have to call it the super megaplex. <laughs> I think we're a long ways off from that. <laughs> we'd, it'd be like a shitty one bedroom apartment. That's our office, but we'd still call it the super megaplex. Dude, our office would be so sick. That'd be so much fun to design and, like, put things in and set up and, like... Have a fun gaming area. Have a nice area where, like, we stock food all night. cool area to record all the it's mail like the opening. the Game Grumps office, but a smaller, better version. Yeah, much better. Not as weebish, you know, Aaron? It'd probably be... There'd be some weeby stuff in there for me. Oh, yeah. You'd have to put up an Iron Giant poster. I'd have to put up a Katamari Damacy poster, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, you know? yeah. That'd have to be... I'd put up a Katamari Damacy poster. Yeah? Would you put up an Iron Giant poster? Probably not. I wouldn't put up a Katamari Damacy post. I mean, I already have the boy inked on my back for life, so... Oh, speaking of ink, I know my next tattoo. Yeah, you showed me. I'm gonna get the 7-Eleven logo tattooed on my arm. Good God. I just want, like, weird little tattoos like that. I have the three-eyed fish from The Simpsons, and I love I loved the 7-Eleven logo tattoo. And I was watching Jackass, and I saw Johnny Knoxville has a Wawa tattoo, which Wawa is, like, a convenience store around, like, New Jersey and, like, that section of the country. It's, mm -hmm. like... Or maybe even in Texas, I don't know, but, like... 
I want that 7-Eleven. I saw someone else get it, and I was like, that, I want that on my arm. Why don't you use the Corner Pantry logo? How about I use the Obama gas station in Columbia, South Carolina, <laughs> which you and me and Jackson all took a trip to. It's wonderful. It's a great gas station, man. In nice Columbia, people. South Carolina, there is a gas station called the Obama. There's two of them on the same road, and it's a picture of Obama with his arms crossed, and the logo just says Obama with his with the big like Hope logo. And but it's right gas. where a bunch of like Republicans are. I love it. It's so fun, <laughs> dude. We, next time we're both in South Carolina for Christmas, we should go shoot a vlog there where we go to the Obama gas station. Okay. Last time we were there, what did was something it the happened. cashier getting in trouble with like a cop or something? Something was happening. Where it was just like awkward. What was it? Something was happening. Something happened to where. One adult made another adult look like a child. That's essentially the situation. Maybe Jackson remembers. But I remember we were driving, and then we passed another one like a mile away, and we're like, there's two? Wait, are there really two? Th yeah, but there's one like a mile down the street. There's another one. Look at them. It's a franchise. They're not out of business. <laughs> Imagine Obama gas stations that like, it's still like a thing 20 years from now. It's just still like. I could still see it being a thing 20 years from now. You know, if these shitty little corner stores can stay open for 80 years, I'm sure the Obama gas station, just the draw of it gets people. There's one in Charleston. There's an Obama convenience store. Ooh. Um, we should, oh my God, let's do a road trip over Christmas. Where we start at the Obama convenience store, or we start at the Obama gas station and then drive down I-26 and go to the, the Obama, Obama convenience, convenience store, store. Hitting up all South Carolinas, do like a little mini documentary, hitting up all the Obama locations. Ooh. Also, um, I remember, all I remember was I went in and I bought pork rinds and a 40. <laughs> That's what I bought because it was New Year's. You, you bought pork loins? <laughs> I bought fresh pork loins. <laughs> you okay, buddy? I just got. <laughs> Jesus. Ah, thanks. Slap my leg. Now I don't have to cough anymore. Let oh. me just stretch. Ah! What's the worst muscle you've ever pulled? Groin. That, it is. I was about to say that. It sucks. It sucks, dude. It's so it painful. happened the first time to me while I was swimming. Yeah, that's an easy, like, swimming or running too fast, or, like, that shit sucks. You don't realize how, like, I was, like, trying to, is. like, paddle myself with one of my legs. Kick too hard? Yeah. So I can't remember what happened. I just remembered. I remember that feeling. Like, it only has to happen once, and you can recall, like, kind of what it was like. Oh, yeah, and then especially if you, like, if you, oh, if you wake up with, like, a crick in your neck, and your day is just off from the beginning, it's like, My oh, back used to be fuck. really bad when I uh, would work stock at Food Lion. Like, my back would be, like, so weird, so, like, I would, it would hurt getting into a car oh, from, like, and stuff. like, bending over? Yeah, it happened once here. I can't remember when, but there, oh, if you I remember, 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 there you, was, like, threw it out. there was, like, a two-week period where my back was just out of commission. You even tried, like, acupuncture. You were desperate for, Oh, like, I anything. was desperate as shit. You could barely walk. I remember that. It happened twice, didn't it? Yeah. Man, that sucks. I, uh... Which goes to say that I should actually probably start eating better. Take it hasn't happened in a while. I though. started taking vitamins every day. I need to take my big man vitamins. It's just so easy. Just get all those, like 150% of all those vitamins you need with one little pill. I, uh, my dad threw out his back once moving a couch, and I remember he just went straight to the bedroom and just like laid down, turned the lights off, and he was in there for like three days. It was so bad. <laughs> yeah. Throwing your back out's not fun. I, I'd imagine, it, especially the tender age of 89 like him. Yeah, and you take for granted so many parts of your body, like, that are so crucial. To, like, I remember when I broke my foot, I didn't realize how much your foot actually works with other parts of your leg. And, like, you just got to move, like, a muscle in your leg to make it hurt. And I was like, wow, this sucks. One day I didn't stretch and I worked my calves out. And for the whole day at school, I was walking around like I shit my pants because I couldn't bend my leg. Like, I couldn't bend oh, my leg. I did a crazy calf workout, and I didn't stretch. And the next morning when I woke up, I got out of bed, and I just, like, collapsed. Because it was like my, a pillar. I was like, I yeah, can't move this. My, my, my body like, will not allow me to move this. It's crazy, dude. We should go do the craziest workout video. <laughs> okay. We should do a workout video for Super Mega. I love working out. That might be a new Nathan song that we just teased. Who knows? Nathan and Friend. I mean, some people have already heard it, kind oh, yeah. of. <laughs> we did, uh, a while back, do that little mini live show with with, uh, with Ninja Brian. Uh, <gasps> is he in here? <laughs> we did, uh, there are, how many? Two, three new Nathan songs. Uh, Nathan from My Two Lovely Uncles. We have uh, written a couple new uh, original songs. I even produced the music for them. They're fully original. And uh, we were, we're going to make a music video for... Uh, one of them in early 2019, and then we got some more ideas on the way. We were gonna, we're gonna try to ramp Nathan back up, and we got a new character to introduce too. Um, and I'm really excited for those. But some of you have already heard it live. I don't think anybody recorded it, but we did do some original songs, including uh, 
Uh, I love working out. Yeah. I'll go ahead and drop that. It's a little seed you guys get. So that video is uh, kind of in the works. We haven't started shooting yet, but we're kind of in like the pre-planning phase. Got a lot of guests in that video. Um, yeah, but uh, maybe if you come out to the Christmas show, you might get to see a little uh, a little song sung by yours truly, who lost his two lovely uncles. Who knows? I don't want to promise anything or give anything away, but... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I'm going to give away. What are you going to give away? I'm at the live show. I, pr pr I promise. And I'm going to ask at the show. I'm going to be like, I promised on a podcast that I would be giving this away at the live show. Your virginity? is go Oh! They're all 18 plus. Continue. You know what? Okay, that's, that sounds fair. <laughs> Ryan's going to give away his virginity. <laughs> you were saving it for marriage, but this live show is so important that Ryan will lose his virginity. Man or woman, who knows the answer to this yeah, question? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there are no favorites here. Yeah. You, everyone calls has, it out first. Everyone has the equal opportunity. Your mom comes opportunity. to the show. Oh, your virginity! <laughs> me! 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 Ma. Ma. I mean, you got to do it on stage. Cool. Cool. Okay, well, that's it for this podcast. All right, guys. Uh, see you uh, next week. Got uh, lots of new videos on the way. Maybe some live action. Who knows? Maybe we're shooting some right now as we speak. Maybe we're out shooting something, but who knows? Um, hold and on. Hold on. My friend My friend just sent me a Snapchat. What is it? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What is that? My friend just bought a PS4 and has, it has Spider-Man. Oh, dope, dude. I've been telling him he should get a PS4 because a lot of good games come out on the PS4 that are exclusives to that system. Okay, bye!